I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show, and welcome to today's program. We're so glad to have you, and we sincerely are, because no one appreciates having our viewers certainly more than we do here at The Shooting Show. We have a great show for you. We have some interesting features. Uh, we have some commentary I think you're really going to be interested in hearing. And let's open today's program. You know, several times we've opened our show with taking shots up here at our 100-yard range down on some steel targets or whatever else we might be shooting at the time. And which is really not that difficult with some of the guns we use, especially our Wesson uh, revolvers. But we haven't done it very much. In fact, I don't ever remember doing it with a 45 automatic. Now then, if we were talking about my old government model here, uh, it would be iffy at best. But what we have, we're going to open today's program with a Clark Heavy Slide, one of the great guns from Clark Custom Guns in Keithville, Louisiana. So let's see what the old 45 can do out here on these steel targets at 100 yards. Friends, it is such a pretty day out here on the range. In fact, I'm getting over a bad cold and a, a little touch of flu, and I probably sound like a little bit, but it's such a pretty day out here. Wish you could all be here with us today while we're shooting. Anyway, we have an un unusual gun today. We opened the program with a moment ago, and uh, no, typically we don't shoot a 45 ACP at 100 yards, but just out of an exercise there, we certainly did, and you notice it did hit that steel target. Uh, this is essentially a bullseye gun. This is a Clark Custom. It's called a Clark Heavy Slide, and of course those good folks, uh, the Clarks down in Keithville, Louisiana, uh, build some of the finest target and action shooting guns that are available anywhere. Well, you can see uh, from the picture there, it looks considerably different from our regular old Colt government model here. And this one's built on a Series 70, a Mark IV Series 70 government model from Colt. And of course the Series 70 models do not have the firing pin lock that the... Uh, Series 80 models do, or whichever, yes, I believe that's correct. Anyway, uh, several differences, one of which is, is immediately apparent. Those of you that know very much about a Colt government model know that they're designed to function under the most adverse conditions. Uh, these guns have a reputation for reliability uh, among semi-automatics that probably uh, throughout our history, or certainly modern history, is unsurpassed. Uh, you can drop a Colt in the dirt, sand, mud, whatever, and because of the loose tolerances, they're probably going to work. Now then, as you know, uh, you know my opinion on semi-automatics versus revolvers. One, for the average person, a revolver is probably going to be more reliable. Again, for the average person, uh, just because a semi-automatic takes more work, you've got to put more time in and practice. You've got to go out and shoot the gun, figure out how it works. Plus, you have more parts that that interact with each other. On a semi-automatic, of course, you have a slide that comes back, cocks the hammer. Uh, in this case, anyway, you have a separate magazine that has to properly feed the cartridges into the chamber. There's a lot of different things now, which can all be worked out. That's not that big a deal if you work at it. Whereas on a revolver, the cylinder turns, brings a fresh cartridge up in line, a hammer is cocked, and bang. So the revolver, as far as the way it functions, is a simpler mechanism. Now then, for wartime purposes, probably the semi-automatic would have some advantages, one of which is, uh, and I'm not going to talk that much about instant reloading because that is a factor that most of us are aware of. You can simply load a magazine full of ammunition quicker into, uh, or at least most people can, Jerry Michalik, the great revolver shooter being an exception, I'm sure, but uh, anyway, you can just reload the semi-automatics quicker than you can the revolvers. Now then, reloading may or may not be an issue. Uh, to some people, it certainly is. Anyway, these guns with the great tolerances that they have, and they're not typically, as they come from the factory, they're not that accurate. Now, some of the newer ones, some of the newer Colts, not counting uh, a gun like a Gold Cup, something like that, but they'll shoot in three, four inches at 25 yards. My old gun here, <laughs> I say my old gun, this thing's been shot and shot and shot. Uh, it, it'll do about four inches at 25 yards. Some of the good carbine ammunition, I shot a, a three and a half inch group, which for this gun was pretty good out at 25 yards. But you can shake them. Don't know if you can hear that or not, but they'll rattle because you do have tolerances there that uh, allow these guns to work under the most adverse conditions. Now then, on our Clark Heavy Slide, you can shake it and silence. <laughs> Nothing at all because literally the gun has been tightened up where it will put the 
uh, slide and barrel relationship will be in the same situation for every shot. And uh, instead of doing three and a half or four inches at 25 yards, this Clark Custom will go into about an inch or so at 25 yards. So uh, really, those people that think the uh, 45 government models are inherently inaccurate, not so. The system on these guns, the original Browning design system, can be made as accurate as any uh, repeating handgun, for that matter. Now, friends, of course, uh, for those of us who load our government model and take a shot with it, those of us that, that shoot the 45, and a lot of us who watch this program do, uh, really don't consider it having a lot of recoil. See, it's just not, it's just not enough to me to worry much about. But the Clark Heavy Slide here with this Bomar rib on top of the slide, and we'll take a closer look in just a second, has even less because one of the weight on that slide. Well, let's do take a closer look at it. My friends, you can tell uh, this particular gun has been fitted with this Bomar rib here on the top, but what you may notice that's really unusual is this extended front sight. And of course, it has the excellent Bomar sights here on the gun, which are really good. And what this effectively does, it extends your sight radius so you can uh, draw a finer bead, as some might say. Uh, it's just an aid in being very precision. Now this gun's point in existence is to make very small holes on targets uh, of paper. This, uh, some people would probably call this a bullseye gun because that's really what it does. This is a target gun. It's been fitted with a somewhat lighter spring. It's made to function with the target wad cutter type ammunition. And of course this one has received a a very nice package from the Clarks. You can see the uh, little uh, tiger tooth type uh, stippling here to, to really make that a non-slip grip surface here on the frame of the gun. This is very time consuming to do that sort of work. It also has been fitted with a, a three pound trigger. Uh, it's very, very slick and as we said earlier there's just no rattle whatsoever to this gun. Now this complete package uh, is going to retail well over a thousand dollars and this gun is in fact on sale and essentially it's just brand new. I don't know if the previous owner ever shot the gun or not because it just appears to be new in all respects. Uh, the good folks at Britain's have loaned us this gun for testing and I think they have it priced at around a thousand dollars. Certainly be a considerable savings. If you're interested in a, a bullseye type gun, a really a first quality target type 45, well, you ought to give them a call. Now friends, this Clark Heavy Slide model gun is designed certainly to be a target gun. Uh, there are those people that uh, say that handguns have no sporting purpose. Well, that's ridiculous. Uh, this is as much a target gun as, uh, as some special uh, German long distance 22 or whatever else that costs two or three thousand dollars. It absolutely is. And uh, this gun, of course, has the uh, uh, tighter barrel bushing to make it come back in line every time. It's really a Cadillac piece of work. And it's designed to do this particular thing extremely well. and we'll apply our safety. You know, friends, it is such a pleasure always working with uh, a piece of art like this, like this Clark Custom gun. It's very satisfying if you enjoy shooting a handgun to see them all go in the same hole, certainly. So Clark Custom guns, the uh, Clark Heavy Slide. Friends, all of us as shooting enthusiasts should be subscribing to Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots three big issues monthly with literally thousands and thousands of firearms bargains. Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, the zip code 68902, their phone number area 402-463-4589, MasterCard or Visa for subscriptions only. Now call them at 1-800-345-6923. Friends, you can communicate with the shooting show on CompuServe now. Our number is 735 42 3024. Again, 7354230024. And to join our shoot and show gun club, call us at 1 800 895 7916. We take Visa, MasterCard, check, money order, whatever you got. 
join today, friends. We need to reach as many people as we can. For those who would control or ban guns, the facts don't seem to make any difference at all. They are convinced that if guns are around, crimes are going to be committed. Getting guns out of the wrong hands, which is Sarah Brady's slogan, really means getting guns out of the hands of every decent person in the U.S. For Sarah Brady and handgun control to prove my assertion wrong, they would have to join with the gun lobby in lifting the gun ban in Washington, D.C. They can't, they say, because they respect local control. Sure they do. That's why handgun control pushed the Brady bill on to half of the states in the country that did not want a waiting period. Put simply, handgun control's position reeks of hypocrisy. Kennesaw, Georgia required that every household have a gun and their crime rate plummeted. Washington, D.C. banned guns and their murder rate soared up to the top of the charts. The word in the Atlanta city jail is, stay out of Kennesaw. You won't hear anything like that in the D.C. jail about D.C. Oh, but the guns doing the harm in D.C. come in from neighboring Virginia. Really? Well, why is Virginia's crime rate one-eighth of D.C.'s? Since there really are so many guns available in Virginia, and legally so, if guns were the problem, Virginia should have a murder rate far in excess of D.C.'s. Five years ago, Florida made it easier for people to carry guns anywhere they went. Their murder rate had been higher than the national average, but over the last five years, their murder rate has fallen 21%, even while the nation's has risen 12%. Or Gary Kleck has found that there are 2.4 million times a year when an American uses a firearm in self-defense. The Carter Justice Department, in a study of rape in the United States, found that 32% of the rapes that are attempted are actually carried out. But there was one exception. Women who had a gun or a knife only suffered the crime 3% of the time. Kleck also found that one in three is more likely to be injured when offering no resistance than to an, to an attacker than when using a firearm. No matter how you look at it, guns save lives. More guns would mean fewer crimes and fewer criminals. This is Larry Pratt for Gun Owners of America. Hello, friends. I'm out here practicing for one of the most fun hunting sports that you can imagine. You can use a variety of action types you have access to uh, year-round hunting some cases no limits and you get to use a variety of guns well you know what I'm talking about is a sport of varmint hunting and we need to introduce you folks to varmint hunting. A lot of us have been doing it for years and didn't know what to call it, but we especially need to introduce you to the Varmint Hunter magazine. You know, friends, varmint hunting is one of the fastest growing shooting sports in the world. In fact, the Varmint Hunters Association, they have members in all 50 states and 19 foreign countries. Now, their magazine focuses on varmint hunting and super accurate reloading and shooting techniques. Plus, there's a lot of humor, a lot of interesting cartoons and humorous articles in the magazine. Uh, incidentally, the magazine is large. It's very high quality and something I think you're really going to enjoy reading, and it's published quarterly. It's only $24 for an associate membership in the Varmint Hunters Association. And look, for information, now you ought to do this. If you're a dedicated shooter, this is something I think you're really going to enjoy. For information on... You know, friends, Judge and I look at this Colt 1991 A1 here. It's made in, in Connecticut. And, uh, and I don't even know if we should mention Colt or not. We, we do support them, and we wish them well. We wish they would buy some advertising on this show. However, uh, Connecticut, they're made in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut's close to Massachusetts. Plymouth Rocks in Massachusetts. Thanksgiving was last week. So that's our line of reasoning here. And we hope that all of you had a good and, and healthy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. And we're doing a little reflecting this week about what we have in this country. Sir, what was, in fact, the first Thanksgiving Day about? Well, it was a Thanksgiving for a harvest, for Indian summer, for friendly Indians. I guess the Indians should have been given Thanksgiving for friendly settlers because that's about the last ones they saw. But uh, 
Uh, it was a time of giving thanks for uh, the benefits that, and the largesse, the goodness that has been bestowed upon us here in this country. Well, they were thankful to God for what they had been given and the opportunity they have been given. I'm sure that most of us, and I think that uh, if, if some of us out there don't believe that, well, you need to go back and read your history books. Because that in this country, we have had the unique opportunity, uh, and I think it is unique pretty much throughout history. We don't know of another civilization that has evolved with free people. Is that, is that right? I don't know of any, Johnny. Switzerland's pretty much of a, of a, of a free country. Uh, I don't know of any other, just offhand. Well, of, of course, Switzerland is a very small country as compared to us. Here we are in the United States with, we have something literally of everything in this country. We have from, from here in the swamps in Louisiana to uh, the mountains in Colorado to the beautiful hills in Connecticut to uh, the uh, Stone Mountain in Georgia. You name it, we've got it here in this country. And we also have that many variations of people. And where we are, and we think this is so important, if we don't preserve our rights as, as citizens, if we don't preserve the things that our forefathers there at Thanksgiving were thankful for, and it's an ongoing fight. You know, Judge and I talk uh, uh, about my mustache here, how it's grown along there, and, and we, uh, <clears throat> he had an interesting story about as someone in the Navy who had a mustache quite a bit more spectacular than mine. But you know, freedom's something that you have to work at just like anything else. You have to shave. If you're going to have a clean face, you're going to have to shave about every day if you're a grown man, uh, sometimes twice a day. Well, freedom's the same way. You can't let it go because if you do, it's going to be something else entirely than what you started with. Johnny, you're a good preacher. You missed your calling. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, incidentally, are you going to be the master of ceremonies at the Friends of NRA banquet? Uh, well, I plan to be, yes, sir. I, I certainly plan to be. Uh, you give another rouse and talk like you gave up in Massachusetts, they'll, they'll I will elect you to something down here. Well, probably not, but I do appreciate that. Uh, you know, wherever we go in this country, the people we talk to, the viewers of this program have been so nice and supportive of us wherever we've been, and we do appreciate every last one of you. Uh, this is something that, uh, this is a time of reflection. This holiday season, certainly between now and Christmas, is not very far away. And we need to reflect, one, where we came from, how we got here as a nation. And we can't forget, we can't get lost in this maze of, of gizmos that are going to be coming around for Christmas, the Christmas excitement. We've got a job to do, friends. We have a new Congress coming up when? About January 3rd or 4th, something like that. And you know what, friends? We need to start those letters and phone calls and faxes immediately. Don't you agree? Let them know what you want. They won't know any other way. Well, that's right. Uh, I heard someone say, uh, my father had was a, uh, a, a local politician here years ago in Louisiana. And he had a friend who was on this. We had something called a police jury. And one of the uh, uh, politicians said, well, if you don't tell your support or your public how good a fellow you are, who's going to tell them? Well, just like with these politicians, if you don't, if you want them to know how you feel, how you think, somebody's got to tell them because you can trust us on this one. The other side, the people who want to disarm us, to take everything away from us that goes bang, the people that want to make a socialist, Nazi socialist country out of, out of the United States, they're going to make their, their voices heard. Well, Johnny, of course, that calls to mind Sarah Brady's quote, that we'll never achieve our dream of a socialist America until we totally disarm all those who would never consent. Uh, I don't think this country wants socialism. Uh, I know I don't. Uh, I, uh, and I don't understand why uh, people are so anxious to surrender our sovereignty to... Uh, change our country into something else. They've got the best deal they ever had. Every one of them. And uh, I'm going to take off on, on several groups now. For example, uh, minorities. There was at least, there's at least one minority that didn't choose to come to this country. They were brought here. But at least over here, 
they have an opportunity to make their own way. They don't have to worry about being eaten by their friends or their enemies. Uh, the other minorities that are here, the Chinese, the, uh, uh, the Hispanics, they've all come here because this was a land of opportunity for them. And they've built themselves up to a very substantial group. Koreans have come over here. Uh, and the Koreans uh, were just like squirrel. You can't keep a squirrel on the ground. You couldn't keep Koreans in, in poverty. Uh, they, they got out and worked, and they, they, uh, uh, they built shops, and they became merchants, and uh, uh, they proved that this is still the land of opportunity. Well, and you made a good point there. You know, this is one of the things that, in fact, a lot of people, a lot of the liberals in government are doing. They're trying. It's not we're Americans, we're Italian Americans, or we're uh, Arabic Americans, or African Americans, or Sumatra Americans. Well, what's wrong with being Americans? You know, since when? I wonder what the people in uh, do the people in in uh, in in Italy or in uh, France or wherever do they quote and say, well, they're not really a Frenchman, they're a uh, Czechoslovakian, uh, French uh, French. Czechoslovakian or French, you know, Russian or whatever. I don't think that's the case at all. And we've got, to, in this country, we have to start thinking of ourselves as Americans. Don't you agree? Yeah, I do. Uh, and that's what uh, Robert E. Lee told the South after the uh, war between the states to uh, forget your past animosities, to go to work and teach your sons to be Americans. You know, we see this now with uh, different groups of shooters. You and I were talking about uh, shotgun shooters the other day, the trap shooters. Well, the trap shooters may not have an interest in uh, IPSC competition. They use guns like this Colt government model and, and different variations. Mm -hmm. Or they may not uh, enjoy uh, silhouette shooting. But the thing is, what, what was the, the quotation about if we don't, if we all hang Separately, what was that quotation? We either hang together, or we shall surely hang separately. So surely, and it's going to be a lot harder to hang all of us together than it would be us as individuals. Well, that's the reason why it's necessary to stick together on on the basic ideas, idea, ideas, and ideals of this country. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Bill of Rights. Uh, you know, one of my uh, one of my ex-partners who is a retired judge now told me I was the most defense-minded lawyer he'd ever seen. Uh, it's not that. Uh, it's that uh, I read the Bill of Rights and I know what it says and I know what it means. Uh, I'm against this house-to-house -house search business, whether it be in the ghettos of, of Chicago or whether it be in the, in the rural areas of the South. It's wrong. Uh, the British did that, and the, and the colonists determined it shall not happen here. Uh, and Clinton seems to be in favor of house-to-house -house searches, and when the courts declared it unconstitutional, he said, well, then you need to write it into the leases that they consent to it. Uh, the incremental surrender of freedoms. Freedom is a precious thing, and it's a fragile thing, and needs to be fought to be kept. Well, one brick at a time. Uh, just like on the seashore, it doesn't erode all at one time. It erodes a little bit at a time. So what we have to do, we have to keep building it back. Uh, every time there's an attack on us, on our rights as gun owners, or our other rights as Americans, we need to build it back. We need to go, and that's why it's so important. We've got to be on the offensive. We said this last week. We cannot take a defensive position. You know, the, the best defensive team in the world if all they can play is defense and they don't have an offense, the first time they run up against a team with a halfway decent offense, they're going to lose the game. It doesn't make any difference. We've got to be on the offense uh, as gun owners. We've got to fight to get some of our rights back. Why did we have rights in 1900 that we don't have today? You could have a, a long magazine uh, uh, in some of the in guns the first part of this century. Why? Wh what's happened? The problem is not our Constitution. The problem is not the different guns that are manufactured. The problem is the responsibility of society and what government's doing to us. That's where the problem is. I couldn't agree with you anymore, Johnny. I couldn't agree with you anymore. And the ultimate, the ultimate test of freedom 
is the ability to make it stick by force if need be. If need be. Uh, I, I just, I don't understand the, sh the shotgunners, the trap shooters, the skeet shooters, not being just as concerned about government interference as the, uh, as the handgun owners or the long gun owners or the misnamed assault weapon owners. Um, if you really want to do some damage, you do it with shotgun. That's true. That's true. What was it that uh, one of your instructors said that if you were confronted with three people, what right. did he say? said if you, in fact, in, in a combat course that I went through some time ago with a very fine instructor, said if you faced three people that were armed and you yourself were armed and you had to respond, one had a, a machine gun or submachine gun, one had a handgun, one had a shotgun, said by all means try and neutralize the shotgun carrier because he's the one that's most likely to get you first. So that's really true and it's really a terrible thing that that different, you know, bickering among ourselves, and there's been quite a bit in different associations, and I'll say, well, I don't like a particular type gun. Forget that. Like you said, the, the Second Amendment of the Constitution is not about duck hunting. It's not about deer hunting. It's not about any sporting use. Or skeet hunting, or skeet or shooting, shooting, or trap shooting. Or game. It's not a game in the Constitution. It is, in fact, as serious as our freedom in this country. That's why it's there. Without the Second Amendment, all the other amendments, the entire Constitution does not count. Now, you people think that somebody's not out there who won't take control if given the opportunity. During this century, this modern century of the, tw the 20th century, in fact, more people have been killed by oppressive governments than at any point previous in history. Than in all the wars in all in of all history. In all the wars of history. Yeah, that's true, and Hitler was a piker. Uh, he just got, got a relatively small number. Uh, Stalin was much worse. And then Mao Zedong. And Mao Zedong was terrible. The Khmer Rouge was horrible. Uh, these, these are the atrocities that, that uh, man commits upon his fellow man or fellow women is just, uh, to me, unimaginable. And the only way you can do it is to take care of it. I remember uh, I started a gun collection. Uh, I guess I started it about the time of the Manson, uh, Sharon, Kate, uh, Sharon Tate murders. I just resolved that my family was not going to be held hostage. Well, I saw that uh, a piece on that recently, and if any one of them, if if they'd only had a twenty-two, a twenty-two revolver, a twenty-five automatic, a little Raven, just anything at all they could have at least made a stand. They could have run those people out, very possibly. Uh, certainly, any gun would have been, would have, would have been better than, than trying to fight against a bunch of knife-wielding people. And that's something else. There has, in, in history, there's never been an internal collapse. You correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I am. Any time, there's never been an oppressive government uh, having success over the general population when the general population was armed. An oppressive government has never been t able to take over. Uh, Mao Zedong is in the Guinness Book of World Records, 60 million of his own people, I believe. And it's never happened when the general population was armed. That's true, Johnny. That's true. Now, of course, armaments vary. It's hard to revolt against tanks and machine guns. But the, Af the, the, Af uh, the, the, the Afghanistan they sure people did. proved that they could defend themselves against tanks and machine guns if they were determined. Because they were committed. They were determined. And that's the key, friends. Why not let's do it before it comes down to having to use guns to defend our own constitutional rights against our own government? Why not do it in the polling booth? Why not do it with letters and phone calls and faxes? Because trust us on this one. If we don't do it now, like the old boy with the, the air filter company, if you don't pay me now, buying the little air filter, buying the little oil filter, you will pay me later to rebuild your motor. Same thing, friends. If we let it go, if we let it go, if we let control of our country, of our government, of our moral issues, if we let it go, well, it's going to all collapse at some point. Well, Johnny, you have uh, you expressed it very adequately, and you amaze me with your uh, with your background and your understanding and knowledge of it without any 
uh, real formal training in the uh, in the legal aspects of it. Uh, that's what our, our founders were. They weren't, uh, a few of them were lawyers, but not all of them. They were people who had experience in life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that counts. That counts a whole lot. Um, I just wish we could get this message out to the whole public, Johnny, not just to... Uh, well, that's what, of course, the, the shooting show is all about, reaching as many people with our message as possible. So if we could just get some more advertisers. Go ahead and find us some advertisers. <laughs> well, we certainly need all the help we can get. Well, meanwhile, speaking of advertisers, here comes one now. You know, friends, it's rare in any field of manufacture that one particular company has a clear-cut advantage over the others. Well, in this case, it's Corbon Ammunition, Corbon Bullet Company, because they make the best handgun, long gun, and even some specialty caliber ammunition that's been real hard to get in the past. If you really want your handgun or rifle to perform at their absolute best, you need to find some Corbon Ammunition. For information on where you can get Corbon, information on their product line, call them. Corbon Bullet Company, 1-800-626-7266. Again, give them a call. It's a free call. 1-800-626-7266. Trust me on this one. Corbon is the best there is. Folks, this is where SSK lives. This is the peak of the color. We just wanted to give you a look at it before we got into the commercial. Now grab your pencils and pens because you're going to need them pretty quick. This is an SSK Custom Thompson Center 375 JDJ. It's equipped with a custom frame that's engraved, an octagon barrel that's magnaported and chambered for the famous 375 JDJ cartridge. This is a 444 Marlin neck down to 375. It shoots bullets from 200 to 350 grains weight. It's probably at its best with its 270 grain Hornaday. We'll show you what it does to moose a little bit later. We know there's a lot of Ruger fans out there. This is one of our custom Rugers with a diamond shaped barrel. As far as I know, we're the only ones that do that. Take a look at that barrel, isn't that nice? This is a conversion of the Ruger Super Red Hawk that we call a beast. It's dead flat and recoil, zero muzzle rise. That's due to the SSK brake. A lot of us think shooting those steel targets fast and accurate and knocking them down real quick is a lot of fun. This is a custom Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP caliber designed for that purpose. Anytime. That was the 45, and this is the 44 Magnum Beast. Go. Folks, this is a 28-pound pumpkin that we cleaned out and put a little water in to get a good explosive effect. Try and match out with your 30-06. Here's another 28-pounder with two gallons of water in it.
Yes, sir. Just call SSK anytime y'all need a pumpkin gun. <laughs> Here's two and a half gallons of water. Those pumpkin and water hits were with the 375 JDJ. I'm J.D. Jones. I developed the 375 JDJ and the barrels for these contenders to shoot them. Anytime you all need a pumpkin gun, a good handgun for hunting, action job, telescope sights, or custom rifle of any kind, give us a call. We'll help you out. For information on the entire lineup of SSK Industries products, give them a call. Area 614-264-7217. Again, 614-264-7217. You know, friends, gun we're going to look at right now, this is a Wesson 357 Magnum. This is the model 715, I believe. It's your basic 357 six-shot model from the great folks at Wesson Firearms. And I'll tell you what, this is a stainless steel gun with one of the custom Hogue grips. And this is about as nice an all-around handgun as I could imagine. You know, we get a lot of inquiries here at the program about a lot of people who certainly don't know much about guns that are now getting interested uh, in handguns will say, well, what's the best first gun? Or what, if I can only own one gun, well, what would it be? Well, uh, uh, a lot of us are used to the 45 uh, government model semi-automatic, but probably the best all-around handgun will be a four-inch barreled, 357 Magnum revolver, mainly because it'll do everything well. One, it can sit literally in a drawer, and we hope that most of you don't do this, but some people do. They'll put a handgun in a drawer and leave it there for years, unfired. Well, a gun like this revolver is probably going to work. If there's any life left at all in those primers, and even if one of the primers or so goes bad, all you have to do is keep pulling the trigger, and you'll eventually find one that'll work. Whereas the semi-automatics are much more critical on, and certainly in my opinion, uh, about being left uh, loaded somewhere and then uh, several years later take it out, the gun may or may not work at all. So that is one advantage, but the revolvers have the advantage of using any different bullet profile from shot cartridges to wad cutters to jacketed hollow points, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it'll, it'll, all it has to do is go in the cylinder, it'll probably wor uh, it'll shoot. But uh, this particular Wesson is a very accurate uh, typically our accuracy in revolvers, we normally think of six and eight inch barrels, but this four inch gun uh, turned in a very surprising group. Uh, of course, the Wessons typically are more accurate than most of the others, but uh, it went uh, about an inch and a half for six shots at 25 yards in our testing, uh, which is real good, I think, from a four inch barrel revolver. In fact, that's about as good as I can shoot one, to tell you the truth. With a better shooter, it might have done better than that, or from machine rest, it probably would have. But these are such very nice guns. One of the things that some of us forget sometimes, uh, nothing is faster than a revolver for the first shot. Uh, there are certain semi-automatics like the Glock and the uh, several that have, uh, uh, don't have safeties that have to be flicked off, and, and they're real good for the first shot too. But you don't have the transition like you would on a double-action semi-automatic you have that same trigger pull each time and you have the option of thumb cocking this thing and having a very precise and light trigger pull. So again, they're, they're very fast, you know, just, and uh, I personally shoot the Wessons better than uh, some of the other revolvers that we have here and I think it is a function of grip angle. I just like the way the actions work. You know friends, this Colt 45 or something equivalent I think is extremely important for self-defense. But let me tell you about another kind of defense. How about mental defense? We need to know what's going on in this country and trust me on this one, there is no better publication to do that than the New American Magazine. It comes every two weeks, twice monthly, and of course they cover subjects that we need to know about. They cover all sorts of issues from the gun issues to what's going on in Congress to all sorts of news items from all around this country and around the world for that matter things that are absolutely essential to us as conservative, gun-owning Americans. We need to know this. This is a tremendous bargain. It's $22 for a six-month subscription. And I'll tell you what, friends, you're going to read, you'll read the New American, and you're going to get angry, you're going to get mad, but you'll also find out what you need to do. You're going to find out facts that you will not find in any other organized news media publication. 
But trust me on this one. These people, we know them. And if they say it, you can take it to the bank. It is, in fact, true. And that brings up their 800 number. You can get the New American by calling 1-800-727-TRUE, TRUE. And those numbers, of course, are 1-800-727-8783. The New American, $22 for a six-month subscription. It comes twice a month. Friends, you need this magazine if you want to know what's going on. And in times like this, we need both of these. We need our guns, and we darn sure need our information. You know, friends, uh, talking about speed and accuracy of the first shot is something that I think is not done often enough. You know, if you're a police officer and you're walking down the street, a troubling situation is not going to come up to you and say, hey, I'm trouble, you know, get ready to do something. That's not how it works. You'll be immediately presented with it, and your ability to react quickly and accurately may uh, actually mean a difference between life and death. You've got to be able to got to be able to do something quickly and that's one place that the double action revolver really does excel. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong if you're willing to learn to use the semi-automatics that's great but the revolver is far from antiquated. My friends briefly here you can tell our Wesson of course it has the crane mounted latch whereas some of the others have latches or cylinder releases back here but these are really such nice guns it has fine adjustable sights the excellent a whole grips and remember if you need to reload your revolver quickly there are a couple of different methods available this is an HKS uh, speed loader just literally put the cartridges in place there and all you have to do is turn and then release and it's, it's fully loaded and let's show you another one now friends we have the Safari Land this is a comp 3 speed loader and actually it's spring loaded right in here with, where I'm uh, pointing with my finger there there's a spring that is compressed so what you do you line up a couple of the holes here get them in line and just press and then the cylinder is instantly loaded so you can go back with your shooting friends what you're looking at is and then the cylinder is instantly loaded so you can go back with your shooting Friends, what you're looking at is one of the neatest discoveries we've made in some time on the program. This is a bottle of Black Canyon Black Powder Replacement. And one of the things you miss with this is since it has no sulfur in it, you don't have the mess that we normally associate with black powder shooting. Uh, it's more stable than black powder. It's a little safer to store and handle. And, and those of us who enjoy shooting these black powder firearms, you just don't have to spend all that extra time in cleaning because there's just not, uh, not much mess at all. You need some of this if you enjoy shooting and hunting with black powder. So give them a call, Black Canyon Black Powder Replacement. Call them 800-622-8669. Again, 1-800-622-8669. Please tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Well, friends, the point of this little demonstration is that if you have a revolver or you're considering buying a handgun for the first time, certainly I would personally start with a revolver. And even if I had a semi-automatic, I'd certainly want a good revolver in my battery. Uh, this is strictly up to the individual, but uh, to answer some of the questions that we get in here, and we do get these pretty frequently, uh, if you're a police officer and you're comfortable carrying a revolver, well, remember, nothing is faster for a revolver reload than a second gun. And if you're a police officer, you ought to be carrying at least two guns because they can all malfunction. We have made everything uh, imaginable, every action type here at one time or another on this program, we've had them all malfunction. And at that time, if you do have a malfunction, and if you're a police officer and you're getting shot at or in literally a life and death situation, you may not have time to say, wait a minute, let me see what's wrong with my gun. Uh, is it jammed or is it...
fouled up, what's wrong, uh, you really don't have time to do that. At that point, you would go for your second gun anyway. Uh, we had this uh, gentleman from who works with the Israeli uh, Defense Force on the show a while back, and he carries two 1911s, and, which I think is, is, is pretty darn intelligent because they live in some pretty tough uh, conditions over there in Israel. So if you're certainly a police officer, and also bear in mind, if you're a homeowner and you want to upgrade your firepower, well, heck, you can buy two quality revolvers for uh, just about the cost of one of the high-quality semi-automatics. So uh, this is definitely something to think about. If you're a police officer and you've been carrying a revolver and you're comfortable with it, you can shoot the gun well, well, one, I would certainly invest in some speed loaders. And if I were uh, just a homeowner, I would certainly invest in speed loaders and learn how to use them because they can work pretty fast. Which was not a terribly fast reload for me, but remember that second gun is always going to be your fastest reload. So uh, uh, anyway, just a little exercise here in what the average person would do. And believe me, 12 rounds of 357 Magnum ammunition, uh, I imagine would settle most disputes. It would certainly uh, be a ferocious uh, amount of firepower in a short span of time. So friends, to answer one of our most often asked questions, uh, the first gun, uh, if I was only going to have one handgun for a while, I believe I would go with a four inch barrel 357 Magnum. Of course, you also have the advantage with the 357, you can shoot the milder 38 specials uh, to learn to shoot the gun or certainly start off children or, or maybe some of the ladies who are not ready for a full charge Magnum. You can shoot the 38 special. You can train with that. And uh, like the wad cutters, uh, 38 special wad cutters have recoil about like a 22. So uh, this is an excellent starting gun, but it's also an excellent gun to stay with. Uh, no, I'm not saying go out and sell your semi-automatic, whatever it may be. Or, and if you want a semi-automatic, that's great. If you're willing to, to spend the time and effort to learn to use it properly, that's fine. However, you can never go wrong with a good quality 357 Magnum revolver. This Wesson is absolutely one of the one of the best. Uh, I typically shoot it better than, than the other revolvers, but a lot of good revolvers out there. Smith & Wesson, uh, Colt, Ruger, uh, Taurus, some real quality ones. We've also seen some, some very nice looking Rossi 357s, and of course there are some others that I, I've left out, but uh, this is always a good choice. Yes? Try to it's real easy to use because all you have is a hook on your waist and you have another hook on a strap, okay? So all you do is you, you're hanging your gun up like you would on a peg gun rack. There is never anything attached to your equipment when you use the tri tote okay? You just set the gun with one hook behind the trigger guard and the other hook on the barrel. To use it, you just push in on you, towards your chest, pick the gun up to shoot it. Basically, you got seven different positions anywhere you want to range the barrel of the gun by just taking it off it's a piece of Velcro strap onto a Velcro shoulder pad. You just put the gun into it, pick it up and shoot it any way you want. I know a lot of people like to walk around with their gun over their wrist. In this position, tucked up under your arm, it's real comfortable, except it breaks your wrist. Set the gun with the hook in front of the trigger guard, and you got the same position, except your hands free always. And what you want to do is you can take your trigger finger right at the trigger guard, pick the gun right up off the pod, and then you got it ready to shoot, okay? The other position that you have is when you set the butt of the gun right on the hook on the side, and you can just hold your gun for field shooting in this manner, or you can just rest it back on your shoulder, shrug your shoulder, hit the gun, catch it, and the gun comes up. It's that simple to use. A lot of people like to go out riding on their four-wheeler and their ATV or climb into their deer stand or drag their deer. You got a securing strap that just peels back. All you do is set it on the barrel of the gun, wrap the barrel up, and you have a little securing loop down here on the pod. Okay, you take that and you secure that right over the hook of the gun. So you're securing the top and the bottom. You can ride your four wheeler, you can climb your tree stand in this manner. If you'd like to pull out your deer, you can open your waist belt up, drop your right hand down through your straps, bring your left hand back up through it. The gun immediately goes on your back. Buckle it up. Take away any of that slack. You don't want that. Just readjust it. Pull it up tight on your back. 
and that's the most secure back carry you'll ever have. You can drag your deer out any way you want to drag your deer out, climb your hands, use your binoculars. You're always hands free with the tri tote. Now then, friends, for information or to order one of the all season tri totes, call them at 1 800 231 1443. MasterCard or Visa, $38.50 plus $6.50 shipping and handling. This is a special price for our shooting show audience, so please identify to them that it is, uh, you did see it on the shooting show. This is an excellent piece of equipment a lot of us would like to have, friends. 1 800 231 1443. And by the way, the Tri Tote will make a great Christmas gift, so hurry today and get your order in again. 1 800 231 1443. Hi, I'm Carrie Carlson of Soldier of Fortune Magazine. We're here today in Boulder, Colorado for the first annual Colorado Ladies' Chair. Keep your left thumb down low, your right thumb on top of it. Keep single action. Keep your thumb So I should shoot double action on each No, I shoot single action. Relax. Yes. We're speaking now with Judy Woolley, who is a national and international shooter. She's won several competitions, and she's come out today to give a demonstration. And Judy, we're really interested in how you got started in this, and why it's so important now for women to be thinking of shooting as a sport as well as a method of self-defense. Well, um, it's something that's just, it's very challenging all the time to learn, you know, to do well. And so anything that is challenging that you take seriously also gives you satisfaction. So a lot of women, okay, uh, once they get over the initial reticence of you know, actually firing the gun, pulling the trigger, whatever, find out just how enjoyable it is, that it is a challenge, that it's satisfying, and just enjoyable and want to come out and do more. We're talking with Paula Mishler right now, and a lot of people are out here today because this is one of their favorite charities. Um, the proceeds are going to the American Cancer so Society for the prevention and treatment of breast cancer. Um, other women are out here because they thoroughly enjoy shooting. And Paula, why don't you tell us why you're here today? Well, I'm here for a multitude of reasons. My dad, for one thing, is one of the vice presidents here of the Boulder Rifle Club, and he told me about it. One of the biggest things, besides liking to shoot a lot, my sister died in April of breast cancer. That was what initially started it. So when I heard about it, that was a real interest for me to come out and participate. And when did you begin shooting? Pistol? Eight weeks ago. <laughs> Eight weeks ago. Eight weeks ago. And you're currently attending the Colorado Institute of Law Enforcement, correct? That is correct. It's Colorado Institute of Law Enforcement training out of Fort Collins. It is the only privately owned academy in the nation that I'm aware of, and it's tops. You know, friends, this box of Corbin ammunition and this Wesson 41 Magnum are, in fact, a perfect match for each other. 
But it doesn't matter whatever gun you may have, like this SKS or a hunting rifle or a 38 Special or a 9mm makes no difference because Corbon is absolutely the best factory ammunition that money can buy, period. And also, friends, when you see a box of Corbon on the shelf or you give them a call, realize that Corbon is helping keep the shooting show on the air. They've been one of our most dedicated sponsors. You cannot find finer people in the entire shooting industry. For information on Corbon ammunition, call them 1-800-626-7266. Again, 1-800-626-7266. Tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Hello, I'm Al Evans. And I'm Bobby Christie, and we sell advertising for the shooting show. We're selling more these days, too, because of the results that we're getting the advertisers. And we want to thank all of you viewers out there who take advantage of the special offers and the special prices that we advertise on the shooting show because you've helped some of our new advertisers to really see what the show can do. We do need more people on board with us because we are working real hard for you. We need your help. And our number is 1-800, and that spells... Save you gun. 728-8486. Remember that 800 number. 728-8486. And that spells save, S-A-V-U, gun. Well, friends, it's happened again. We've run out of time for today's program. From Kurt, the judge, myself, we want to thank everyone for being with us for today's program, and we look forward to seeing you on the next shooting show.